Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Fast Fridays. In today's video, I'm going to be putting a clip into the timeline and we're going to go over everything that is available to you in the inspector to change that clip right on the edit page. So, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve, and we have our little clip in our timeline. It's a chair, and we have our inspector open, just like this. You click on this up here, and our first thing here is composite. This is if you're trying to put a clip on top of another clip, this is where you would blend them. So you have all of your blend modes right here, which you might be familiar with from other editors, be it photo or video. We have opacity that allows you to see through this layer to the one underneath it. In this case, we just have a black background. But if we were to put something behind this clip, like on video one, if this was video two, and we adjusted that opacity down, we would be able to start to see through this clip and see the next one. Next up here, we have the transform page. We have zoom X and Y, and right now you can see that this is lit up. That means that it's linked. So if we unlink that, we can change X and we can change Y. We're going to reset that with this button right here. If at any point you need to reset an individual thing, you can click on any of these arrows. But if you need to reset a whole panel, like the transform panel here, you click on this arrow with the plus sign in it. And with them linked, we can go ahead and do them at the same rate, just like that. It won't change anything else other than just the size. Position, we have X. We can move it side to side along the X axis and up and down along the Y axis. We have rotation angle where you can rotate and everything in the transform panel here is keyframable. So if you wanted the beginning to be bigger, you'd make a keyframe, make it larger, and then pop wherever you want it to be smaller and then shrink it back down to normal size. I'm about to double click on the word zoom here and you'll see that it resets these values. You can do that in, it's a little bit of a lighter reset than if you were to use this arrow because if you use the arrow it will delete your keyframes but if you double click zoom it just sets everything back to base values so if we watch that you can see that it slowly zooms out to match those keyframes pretty cool anchor point is going to change where you rotate from so you can see right there how the anchor point is moving now that we have rotated but we will rotate around whatever the anchor point is set to, which is pretty cool. We have pitch, which is gonna extend it downward, like it's leaning back in its chair, or it's gonna lean forward at you. And then yaw is the same thing, but along the X axis. So it's gonna to lean toward you and away from you, toward you and away from you. You can combine these with zoom to make it distorted, or you can really just get creative with those. They are there if you need them. You have your horizontal flip, your vertical flip, and then our next panel, we have cropping. Cropping allows you to crop any of the sides of your clip. So if you need something to be a different shape or if you just need it to be overlaid and have your background show through, you can crop. The softness slider in cropping is going to either cut in or make softness out, depending on which direction you go with it. So that's very versatile as well. We're gonna skip over dynamic zoom and move right into stabilization. So stabilization is going to just automatically stabilize your whole clip here. So we'll hit stabilize. It will analyze your clip for any shake. It'll find points in there that it can use to stabilize this footage. And then it will zoom in just a touch because it is going to be moving all of your transform controls automatically when you do this so that it looks still which means that there's some wiggling so it crops in so that you can't see the wiggling happen if we watch this back it looks really smooth it takes away a lot of that handheld look to it and if something is shaky just run it through the stabilizer probably will help retiming and scaling if you aren't familiar with these settings just leave them the same as your project settings because they affect like speed changes and things like that and if you mess this up it can look really weird so try to stay out of here until you need to be in here and you know what you're doing next up we're going to go over lens correction this is going to handle distortion so like if you have a very fish eye lens you can turn this down and it will bring it back to where it should be to look flat. It can do this automatically, but sometimes it's better to do it yourself. We'll go ahead and analyze. It says that it's good, but sometimes it'll give you one of these 
and it just depends on what you're looking for and the lens that you shot with because if you shot on a GoPro chances are you're going to have some of that fisheye effect that you'll need to take out of there. That covers everything in the inspector panel for a basic clip just dropped into the timeline. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Fast Fridays and I hope that it helped you get more comfortable editing inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if this did those things, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any upcoming DaVinci Resolve knowledge and I will see you on Thursday.